For the past few decades, Virgin Galactic has been developing and testing its Spaceship 2 launch platform. In this 20-year period, quite a few issues arose causing continuous delays to a flight that was intended to happen years ago. While the journey to the first commercial mission has been very long, they just successfully completed it earlier this morning. Here, they first flew before launching to suborbital space with four crew members on board. This launch is a big deal for the company and will likely mark the start of consistent commercial flights with this vehicle. While on the edge of space, the crew planned to conduct 13 experiments during the mission, ranging from biomedical data collection to microgravity studies of fluid mechanics and combustion. With Virgin Orbit filing for bankruptcy, the success was a much-needed win for the company to try and keep up operations and continue launching. Here I'll go more in-depth into this morning's mission, why the development of this rocket took so long, what to expect in the coming months, and more. The flight lifted off from Spaceport America in New Mexico at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Before the spacecraft came into play, the large mothership needed to complete its job first. The mothership is a special airplane built as a carrier and launch platform for the spacecraft Spaceship 2 and the uncrewed launch vehicle Launcher 1. It's a large, fixed-wing aircraft with two holes linked together by a central wing. The center of the wing acts as the point of connection to the spaceship, supplying power, communications, heat, and cooling. Once Unity was dropped from the mothership aircraft at the proper altitude, it fired its hybrid rocket motor for approximately 60 seconds. It reached a peak altitude of 85.1 kilometers where it floated for a few minutes before gliding to a runway landing at the spaceport at 11.43 a.m. Eastern Time. Around its peak altitude, the crew members had time to get out of their seats and move around before they began to return. Before re-entry, the pilots folded the spacecraft in half so it behaved like a capsule upon re-entry, spreading friction heat across the underside of the vehicle and enabling it to reorient itself. The Galactic One mission was a research flight for the Italian Air Force and Italy's National Research Council. All the way back in late 2019, Virgin Galactic and the Italian Air Force signed the contract for the flight, agreeing to fly three Italian payload specialists on a dedicated research flight. Upon touchdown, the company was quoted saying, What a beautiful landing and a perfect way to complete our first commercial flight and our first dedicated science mission. Congratulations to everyone on board. Virgin Galactic's goal is to increase the launch cadence of these missions and keep flying as often as possible. While well, today's mission was an important step, that process is much easier said than done. Even though both the mothership and Unity spacecraft are reusable and land back at the runway intact, there is a decent amount of refurbishment work necessary. This especially is the case when flying humans are part of commercial missions because of all the extra checks and safety procedures needed. Recently, for example, we saw Blue Origin's New Shepard, which had flown over 20 missions without an issue, abort during the NS-23 launch. While there was no crew aboard, it stresses the importance of flight safety and refurbishing rockets. In relation to hardware, future testing will see Spaceship 2 powered by a different type of motor. With this mission complete, the company now has a lot of work ahead of it. Nearly 20 years ago in 2004, Virgin Galactic was founded. Despite this, the company's main space flight occurred in 2018 with its VSS Unity spaceship. Branson had originally hoped to see a maiden space flight by 2010, but the date was delayed for many years. In 2009, Spaceship 2 was unveiled at the company's spaceport. Branson told the 300 people attending, each of whom had booked rides at $200,000 each, that flights would begin in 2011. However, in April 2011, Branson announced further delays saying, I hope 18 months from now we'll be sitting in our spaceship and heading off into space. By 2012, Spaceship 2 had completed 15 test flights attached to White Knight 2, and an additional 16 glide tests, the last of which took place in September 2011. Around the same time, a rocket-powered test flight of Spaceship 2 took place with an engine burn of 16 seconds. The brief flight began at an altitude of 47,000 feet and reached a maximum altitude of 55,000 feet, while Spaceship 2 achieved a speed of Mach 1.2, or 920 miles per hour. This was less than half the 2,000 mile per hour speed predicted by Richard Branson. Spaceship 2's second supersonic flight achieved a speed of 1,100 miles per hour for 20 seconds. While this was an improvement, it fell far short of the 2,500 mile per hour for 70 seconds required to carry six passengers into space. In 2014, cracks in White Knight 2, where the spars connect with the fuselage, were discovered during an inspection conducted after Virgin Galactic took possession of the aircraft from builder Skeld Composites. Months later, Richard Branson described the intended date for the first commercial flight as February or March of 2015. By the time of this announcement, a new plastic-based fuel had yet to be ignited in flight. At the time, the three test flights of the Spaceship 2 had only reached an altitude of around 71,000 feet, approximately 13 miles. 
In order to receive a Federal Aviation Administration license to carry passengers, the craft needed to complete test missions at full speed and a 62-mile height. Following the announcement of further delays, reports came out that Branson faced backlash from those who had booked flights with Virgin Galactic, with the company having received $80 million in fares and deposits. Tom Bauer was quoted saying, They spent 10 years trying to perfect one engine and failed. They are now trying to use a different engine and get into space in six months. It's just not feasible. In late 2014, the fourth rocket-powered test flight of the company's first Spaceship 2 craft, VSS Enterprise, ended in disaster, as it broke apart in midair with the debris falling into the Mojave Desert in California, shortly after being released from the mothership. Initial reports attributed the loss to an unidentified in-flight anomaly. This incident claimed the life of one of the pilots and severely injured the other. The flight was the first test flight of Spaceship 2 with new plastic-based fuel, replacing the original, a rubber-based solid fuel that had not met expectations. Initial investigations found that the engine and propellant tanks were intact, showing that there had not been a fuel explosion. Telemetry data and cockpit video showed that instead, the air braking system appeared to have deployed incorrectly and too early for unknown reasons, and that the craft had violently broken up apart in midair seconds later. At a hearing in Washington, the NTSB cited inadequate design safeguards, poor pilot training, lack of rigorous FAA oversight, and a potentially anxious co-pilot without recent flight experience as important factors in the 2014 crash. Following the crash of VSS Enterprise, the replacement, Spaceship 2, named VSS Unity, was rolled out in 2016. For the next few years, the company would continue testing and trying to improve this system. By July 2018, Unity had gone considerably higher and faster in its testing program than its predecessor. Late that year, VSS Unity achieved the project's first suborbital spaceflight, VSS Unity VP03, reaching an altitude of 82.7 kilometers, or 51.4 miles, and officially entering outer space by U.S. standards. In 2019, the project carried three people, including a passenger, on VSS Unity VF01. Finally, last year, Virgin Galactic announced that it opened ticket sales to the public. The price of a reservation is $450,000. The company had sold tickets before February 2022 to clients that had paid deposits earlier or otherwise were on a list. As of November 2021, the company had about 700 customers or 700 tickets sold. Now with Galactic 1 complete, the company said that its plan is to launch private astronaut missions on a monthly cadence, serving a backlog of about 800 people who have signed up to date. The first of those, Galactic 2, is scheduled for early August. Virgin Galactic just launched its first commercial mission and it was a success. While there have been a long list of hurdles between the start of the company and now, they're trying to provide a very unique space service. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.